I mean, the reason why they're not as full featured in part is because of all these um, distributions they have to deal with and the different pointers and configure, you know, maybe it's because Slackware has its, you know, I'm not, I'm not picking on Slackware, I'm just saying, well, just for example, Slackware, you know, for this program to work, it's got to point to this place, but Slackware's got that file over here, and, you know, Ubuntu's got its file over here, and suse has got its file over here, and suse is calling this library this thing, and Ubuntu's calling this library that thing, so, you know, that, that's, that, that's an issue, and that's why we don't have uh, the full, that's why we don't have ported commercial apps. So, um, although the Linux standard base was a good thing, it was a good start, what needs to happen is we need to have um, a lot tighter of a set of standards and rules. Um, and if we don't, we're going to need to have a prototype Linux distribution that's made with uh, people that are going to port their apps in mind to it and that prototype distribution will then be something that the, the commercial um, companies will have a say and a stake in the design to the point that it helps get their apps installed and uh, they'll have a guarantee that, that that whatever parameters they want or need will stay there and then if, the, and if the, all these myriad distributions want to go ahead and adopt that that format, they can if they want to. They probably will. So that that's basically my idea and my plan. My other idea and my other plan is that you know we get some volunteers and we collect some contributions to pay people to go ahead and port uh, closed source apps to, to Linux. Uh, through through our, paid through our contributions and by these people signing non-disclosure agreements with these different companies. If, if that happens, um, I think that um, and we have that stable environment and, and th this group that I'm calling Blue Dogs will will port their apps over to um, this <laughs> I don't know, Blue Dog Linux or whatever you want to call it. And um, that way, at least one environment will be available to run commercial apps. Okay, and um, hopefully the other distributions will 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 fall in line to, to allow those apps to run. You know, an, uh, an esoteric behind the scenes decision that never the desktop user never sees shouldn't be a reason why they can't run the commercial apps. I'll tell you right now, it is, and so. Um, that's the last thing we, I think we need to do. I think that a uh, the box sets need to be sold again. They need to be of a high quality and a long enough shelf life that'll be worth the cost for the user and um, for the end user. And I think that, that that's it. And you know, the whole idea of doing United Linux isn't good enough. You know, just three distributions getting together and saying they're going to agree isn't good enough to get the commercial apps. You have to have an actual environment that they don't really have to pick a winner. So this prototype Linux is not going to be really available for desktop use. It's only going to be available for developer use to get their apps working. And then, like it or not, these other distros, if they want to have commercial apps run in their distro, all they got to do is just change some things is the way things work. Now the users, end users might not like it, but at least they're going to get it this time with the understanding that um, things won't change after this. I don't have that understanding with Grub. I, I can imagine in, in about three years there's going to be another bootloader that's made by someone that everybody else is going to adopt and Grub 2 will get old and, and they're not going to want want to use, you know, that anymore, you know, and, and so, you know, why, why, you know, why didn't we discontinue on with Lilo? Why did we even use Grub 1 in the first place? I, I don't know. Lilo seemed to, you know, there may be some really esoteric technical reason, but for most desktop users that are dealing with one computer and the most two hard disks, I think Lilo is probably a perfectly fine tool.
So I, I know I'm going in circles here, but that that's those these are my motivations. Uh, this is what I hope to see happen. And this is my really my last plea because otherwise the way things are going and the circular pattern that I've seen here, I'm never going to see this come to the desktop. So I have to now view my Linux use as having no business use whatsoever, with no proposition of it ever having any any business application, and it's a hobby. Okay. So, and I'll call it a hobby. And if, you know, some kind of concerted effort needs, needs to be made. And if it isn't made, then it is a hobby. Okay. And sorry. <laughs> I, I want to honor all these people that do their volunteer effort, but I'm going to have to turn away from it because it, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I, I thought in 2002 that by 2006, Wine would be mature enough for me to run my com commercial apps. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I think um, getting the progress is just too slow. It's probably too costly to get those things ported. And so that's why the commercial companies aren't going over and getting their things compiled in the wine library anyway. And it still has some bugs, still isn't really ready yet. It's nice to have, it, it helps the desktop get closer, but at the end of the day, I think the commercial apps really need to be ported. Money's got to be provided, so there there's a financial reason for um, commercial companies to, to allow this to happen. Either we got to alleviate the cost of putting it on this the Linux environment that is changing so rapidly, or we have to um, pay for them to put it on there. And I don't think we're going to pay for them to put it on there. I, I, I know there's some projects out there that take contributions but for the most part they're really inadequate and people aren't going to change their modus operandi it's probably going to stay at about the same level of donations and so um, we have to get some new people some fresh blood some enthusiastic people that want to see uh, an alternative to Windows appear and what we have to do is basically say uh, collect, collect money from those people that are outside the Linux atmosphere right now that want to see an alternative uh, to get those apps ported through their donations to uh, this Blue Dog thing. That's the only solution I think I could see happening to get Linux anywhere. Otherwise, I think it's going to be the same circle. We're not growing. We are not building upon our success. We keep building things and breaking them down and causing, you know, reaping havoc for people. Uh, X, the X consortium may be building upon success, but that success is so, from what I read, uh, technically messy to deal with now that it can't really be, it's almost too hard to fix in the current sense, so they have to do a, re, a, do a rewrite. And so as things keep getting rewritten for no good reason or for good reason, people are going to run into problems. People are going to come and go from the environment. There won't be enough people to get interested in making that little it's just scratch that itch, and it's just going to keep going in circles. We're just, we're, we're kind of like, we really are kind of like the Soviet Union of operating systems. I'm not calling Linux communist, I'm calling it communal. And um, so I know it's communal, it's not communist, but at the same time, the in performance is coming out like, well, they could do some things pretty good, you know, but there's a hole here, there's a problem here, you know, there's a problem there at the end, you know. Linux isn't going to collapse, but it certainly isn't going to get any bigger or more highly used, and, I, and at the end of the day, I really want to see a lot of people using Linux, a lot of people honoring the volunteer efforts of other people, but I also want to see the volunteer efforts of other people to be well thought out, to not impact everybody, you know, when you're making something major like KDE or Grub or, or X, you, you're impacting the entire community. So, you know, it's time to be a little more conservative and thoughtful of those people, even in kernel land, you know, changing the way the USB drives mount. It's, it's just not going to help end users get where they want to be unless there's a real good reason why that's a better choice, but I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a lot of bugs in UDEV. I'm seeing that now that um, I can't, in a simple way, uh, get my USB drive to mount, I gotta edit a UDEV rule that's written in some kind of C language. My bootloader is written in some kind of C language. You can't go in that direction. You gotta get it. So if you're gonna go and you're gonna add more features, you gotta keep the simplicity at the same level. 
So those are all my thoughts. I want to see this operating system go somewhere. I like the spirit behind it. I like the community for the most part. Um, I want to see the community be more honest with people and admit that there are problems with it, there are bugs. And, um, and the reason why we need to do that is because we don't want to come across as snake oil salesmen. That's the last thing we need because if people, if we come across that way and someone tries it, they're going to feel like they're scammed, they're never going to come back. And then we're going to permanently lock out part of the people that we want to, to share our software with in one part. And the second, also to share a philosophy that has you know, a, lo a logically consistent basis. That is the Free Software Foundation. I don't hate it. And, and, and the end goals are good end goals to have. Um, it's just a matter of realistically getting there and I think that the Free Software Foundation and some Linux users are far too vocal in ways that really end up hurting the end users and their own cause at the end so uh, I'm going to end with that but um, these are all my motivations and I'm going to share them with you so um, and that's what I do what I do um, for all these things I want to give them all a chance I want, I want to give an MBSD a chance I tried but at the end of the, end of the day, I'm going to put up what truly happened to me so people can see what happens and what other people go through when they try to use their software. Um, and that way they could and they decide, do I want to put something out there that's going to result in that kind of frustration for the people? And most people are going to say no, and they're going to do something about it. And I hope, I hope that my videos have that kind of impact. Thank you for watching.